Good evening, everybody, and welcome. It's midnight in Bethlehem, 10 o'clock here. On Sunday, Stephen reminded us that Christmas hasn't been cancelled. Sadly, our own family events and society's events may not be quite as we had hoped, but Christmas has not been cancelled. And we gather here this evening to remember the birth of our Saviour. Our liturgy uh, should be on your screen. On this occasion, anything that is white is for you to say. Just a reminder, if you haven't already done it, to make sure that you have what you need for our Eucharist that will take place in a few moments' time. So we begin. Welcome all wonders in one sight. Eternity shut in a span. Summer in winter, day in night. Heaven in earth and God in man. Great little one, whose all-embracing birth brings earth to heaven, stoops down to earth. So grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. I have here the infant Jesus to complete the dressing of our crib. So if you'd like to walk with me, I'm going to add you to our nativity scene. Dear friends, as we meet to celebrate the birth of Christ, let us pray that God will bless this crib, that all who worship his Son, born of the Virgin Mary, may come to share his life in glory. God our Father, on this night your Son Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin Mary for us and for our salvation. Bless this crib which we have prepared to celebrate that holy birth, May all who see it be strengthened in faith and receive the fullness of life he came to bring, who is alive and reigns forever. Amen. And we are now in Christmas proper, when we light the final candle of our Advent wreath. So on this most holy of nights, we move now to our preparation, our Prayers of Penitence. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. God, our Father, you sent your Son full of grace and truth. Forgive our failure to receive him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, our Saviour, you were born in poverty and laid in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit of love, your servant Mary responded joyfully to your call. Forgive the hardness of our hearts. Lord, have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself, that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, and be cleansed from all your sins, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us say loudly and with joy the words of the Gloria together. 
Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And our special collect for Christmas Eve. Let us pray in the peace of this Christmas celebration that our joy in the birth of Christ will last forever. Eternal God, who made this most holy night to shine with the brightness of your one true light, bring us who have known the revelation of that light on earth to see the radiance of your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we move to our readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of Paul to Titus. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to... and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Apologies for the dialects that joined us uh, in that uh, reading. We move on to our gospel reading. So uh, it starts with white words, which are words for us all to say. So, Alleluia, Alleluia. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Alleluia. Uh, here, so hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, our Lord. 
In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went to the town of Nazareth in Galilee, to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In the inn? In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for, I, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a saviour, who is the Messiah. host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favours. This is the Gospel of the Lord, O oh Christ. Now, we'll figure out what's going to happen next. We don't really want to leave that there, do we? Um, so, we'll see if Jack can figure out. I'm going to go press a button. I'll be back. Coming back. It's really quite strange without you all here. Uh, and this is, of course, one of those services in the year that's actually quite strange. There are a whole host of people who we see day to day, week by week, that gather here in these seats or those of other churches that aren't here at this time of day on Christmas Eve. And on Christmas Eve, there are people whom we love to see and welcome back year on year, but some of which who we only see then, and that's okay. But it does mean that it has a completely different feel. It's not the usual crowd. It's not the usual time of day. It's not the usual subject matter that we're talking about and singing about, singing in church. That feels like a long time ago. Anyway... Our passage, that passage I've just read and that Jan and Judith read for us, all speak of a significant event that's going to take place in the morning, through this night, this holiest of nights. There are lots of characters involved in the story. People who are going home. People who are doing their civic duty people who are terrified by angels on a hillside, people who are oblivious to what's going on around them. There was no room in the inn because Bethlehem was full. We only hear about the characters in the story. We don't hear about all of them, but there were people there. Completely missed them. They didn't know what was happening, the significance of what had happened in that city, in that town, in that small hamlet on that occasion, whilst they were snoring, God was arriving. It's a story, it's an account, it's a remembering of events from a long time ago, but those which still have significance today. I will probably see my uh, family uh, like this. Hopefully it won't be so much of a one-way conversation. They might say something back to me. Uh, it's going to take place through a screen, though. Partly because I love them and I want to protect them, and also they in return for me. But it's going to make it different. The gathering around the foot of the tree and the opening of lots of very expensive gifts. Oh, no, that never happens. The gathering together, though, and that exchange of tokens of affection and love, 
It's not going to happen in the same way. That too much to eat on your plate Christmas dinner, I'm quite happy that's not going to happen. There's always too much to eat. I can just look after myself, as it were. Although, to be fair, I, I will be. Uh, not on my own, there'll be other people at the table with me, but they live in the house. Um, Christmas is going to be different. There's been lots of things on social media this last few days since the Prime Minister announced that Christmas was cancelled. <laughs> There's been lots of mention about how it's just not going to be the same. There's been lots of unrest, there's been lots of uncertainty, and of course that all still exists. We don't still know what's on the other side of this great festive season. Lots of people who are reflecting on how their lives are not going to be right because we're not able to do that, which we've always done. And I get it. It's very illustrated. There are things I'm not going to do that I like to do that are not going to happen. But then think there's a young girl called Mary. We remembered her on the fourth Sunday of Advent just a few days ago. Whose life is turned flip upside down. Her life in that moment from when that angel arrived all that time ago and said, oh, by the way, her life was changed completely ruined her Christmas. Actually, maybe it made her Christmas. Her husband, expect, uh, her fiancé, he was engaged to be married to her at the point of our reading. His life was changed dramatically by a whole host of things that took place, not least angels. His life changed beyond his control. The shepherds on the hillside, the wise men still traveling, the emperor at the time, the king, everybody whom you might think of. <coughs> uh, I was talking earlier on, and I was reminded, I think it's love actually, where there's a lobster in the nativity. Um, I didn't see that in the story we just read, but Everybody's Christmas is going to be different this year. But then the reality is, in my understanding, it's different every year. It's not quite the same every year. There are things that happen each year, things that we hate, <laughs> things that we love. Dad's jokes or Christmas cracker jokes, burnt food left in the oven because there's so much anyway. It's never the sprouts. They always manage to make it onto the table. I'd leave them in the oven. Christmas is not going to be the same. But God is. That's the point of Christmas. God is the same. God's the same now, here, in 2020, on Christmas Day, when we celebrate his birth, his arrival. God with us. What Emmanuel means. We've got lots of learning of words this last few days, haven't we? God with us is still the same. He's still here. Boris can't do a thing about that. And I don't blame him necessarily either. We're living in strange times. God who was around at the dawn of man. God who formed from the voidless nothingness to make the world. God who moved over the waters in creation. God who was there as Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all of those patriarchs, people of the altar. God, who's been throughout the whole of history, becomes one with us on Christmas morning. It changes it forever. Yes, a virus that spread around the world has a devastating impact on so many people's lives. It mutates and becomes more virulent or whatever the right word would be and has ongoing devastating effect on people's lives and our hearts and prayers. And I don't say it like people on TV, legitimately, and with those who are struggling. But Christmas is about change. Christmas is about being different. Christmas is about Christ entering into the world. 
Christ entering into the lives of those shepherds on the hillside. Christ entering into your life, my life. The shepherds, they would have been really brave to say, I'm sorry, Mr. Angel, but I'm not going to see what you're talking about. But they could have said, actually, we need to stay here with the sheep. Angelic horse probably has a persuasive power about it. But they could have said, I'm not going. I don't want to know anything about it. They did, and their lives were changed. Mary, Joseph, all the other characters in the nativity could have said, actually, no. Everybody's life is supposed to be changed by Christmas. And if we get to a place where we're settled, I'm all right, thank you very much, quite comfortable, then maybe the real meaning of Christmas has been lost. It's okay to be okay, just as it's okay to not be. But if your life's not changed as Christ enters in, if you're not having to find a new way to share with those you love passionately the good news of Christmas, then maybe Christmas has cancelled. Maybe Christmas has lost its magic. Maybe Christmas has lost its divinity. If you're not so enraptured by the story, the remembering, the account of God, the creator and sustainer of all things, God, laying that all down to become a really vulnerable, tiny baby boy. No room for him to enter into the world. He gets put in a feeding trough. If the significance of that is lost on you and it doesn't have an impact on your life. And maybe Christmas is changed beyond that which it's intended to be. Maybe Christmas is cancelled. But for me, for my household, for anybody who will listen to me, Christmas is not only awesome because of all the fun traditions that ordinarily take place, but it's so significantly majestic and wonderful because God becomes one with us. He knows from this moment forward what it is to be one of us. And of course, we journey forward uh, in time. We'll see how things progress with regards to a pandemic, but we journey now toward Easter and the fulfillment of that which this baby came to achieve. But for now, God enters in. I don't think anybody said it yet, so Merry Christmas. I'm going to get in first. Um, and I hope to see you all again soon. I'm going to finish by praying. So Father God, we thank you that your son entered in. Emmanuel, God with us. We pray on this holiest of nights, this Christmas Eve, that you might open our eyes hearts, that you might open our minds to your immeasurable love. As we journey through the rest of this service and through the rest of this Christmas day, touch our lives in such a way that we're engaged with and consumed by the miracle of the Christmas birth that is the arrival of your Son, our Saviour, and fill us with your Spirit, that we might know what it means to truly love as we have been loved. Amen. Thank you very much for those words, Stephen. We move now to our creed, our statement of belief this Christmas Eve. The words are in white, so they're for us to say together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So let's take a moment of quiet to prepare ourselves for our intercessions, which Mark will lead for us this evening. Our prayers of intercession. Uh, if you could please respond in the white, uh, when I say, Holy God, if you could please respond, hear our prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Father, in this holy night, your Son, our Saviour, was born in human flesh. Renew your church as the body of Christ. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, there was no room for your Son in the inn. Protect with your love those who have no home and all who live in poverty. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, may the pain of labour brought your son to birth. Hold in your hand all who are in pain or distress. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, your Christ came as a light, shining in the darkness, bringing comfort to all who suffer in the sadness of our world. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, the angels sang peace to God, peoples on earth. Strengthen those who work for peace and justice in all the world. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, shepherds in the field heard good tidings of joy. Give us grace to preach the gospel of Christ's redemption. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, strangers found the holy family and saw the baby living in a manger. Bless our homes and all whom we love. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, heaven is come down to earth and earth is raised to the heaven. Hold in your hand all those who have passed through death in the hope of your coming kingdom. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, Christians the world over celebrate Christ's birth. Open our hearts that he may be born in us today. Holy God, hear our prayer. Father, in this holy night, angels and shepherds worshipped at the manger. Throne, receive the worship we offer in fellowship with Mary, Joseph and the saints. Through him who has made, work, made your word made flesh, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Mark. And so we're going to share our peace, which, as we've discovered over the last few months, is not easy to do this way, but we will persevere and do our best. This holy night, the angels sang glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to all in whom he delights. So the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you.
So let's share that piece in whatever way we feel most appropriate. Please be with Stephen, please be with you, Judith, Mark, Jan, and Ruby the dog. And so we move now into our communion service. Word made flesh, life of the world. In your incarnation, you embraced our poverty. By your spirit, may we share in your riches. And now we give you thanks because in the incarnation of the world, of the word, a new light has dawned upon the world, that you have become one with us, that we might become one with you in your glorious kingdom. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks to him. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night that he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, Taking a cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you the sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven, as we say together. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heart. So rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread, the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God is among us, light in the midst of us. Bring us to light and life. Christ is the true bread which has come down from heaven. Lord, give us this bread always. As Stephen reminded us on Sunday, what we're doing here is at least an act of obedient remembrance. We have different theologies maybe about the Eucharist, but it is an act of obedient remembrance. So I'm going to commune Judith, Mark, Stephen and Jan and share this on our behalf.
apologies for the interesting noises. And then there's idols that were in your very special Dear friends, the body of Christ, broken for you, and his most precious blood, shed for you. Our post-communion prayer. God, our Father, in this night you have made known to us again the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Confirm our faith and fix our eyes on him until the day dawns and Christ the morning star has risen in our hearts. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. We have another gospel reading. And it's headed the dismissal gospel. Hear the good news of the word made flesh according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe in him. Sorry, that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light. But he came to testify to the light, the true light which enlightens everyone who was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Our service draws to a conclusion this holy evening. May the father who...
Unfortunately, we don't. We can't. That's okay. You just want to introduce the blessing. And read the blessing. Okay. I'm quite happy to do the gospel reading again. No, seeing as I'm got got to, you got to the end of it. Okay. You, you see your introduction to the blessing, right. and then it all went black and really. Okay. And are there going to be words on the screen, or are you not bothering about that? Uh, no, because okay. they're, they're just you today. So. Thank you. And so to our blessing on this most holy of evenings. May the Father who has loved the eternal Son from before the foundation of the world shed that love upon you, his children. Amen. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with joy and peace. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, by whose overshadowing Mary became the God-bearer, give you grace to carry the good news of Christ. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace. Proclaim the word made flesh. Glory, thanks, and praise to God. Amen. Thank you for joining us this evening. Those On behalf of those of us gathered here, we hope that the rest of this Christmas season will be a blessing to you. Goodbye.